The early access open beta has ended, but open beta for everybody, even if you haven't purchased Diablo 4, begins on March 24th through March 26th. So any of you that uh, were interested in Diablo 4, based off of what you saw from my own streams, as well as other creators and fellow streamers out there, I'm hoping that you will consider downloading and playing the Diablo 4 open beta starting on Friday, because it was a lot of fun. I had a great time Friday through Sunday, actually through Monday, because I played literally up until the servers officially shut down. That's how much fun I was having playing Diablo 4 open beta over the weekend. Now, it started off a little iffy on Friday on St. Patty's Day, as to be expected when it comes to a beta or an open beta in this regard. But overall, my thoughts are Diablo 4 is off to a very promising start, despite a rocky first day. The worst thing that happened to me was the queue time. The first queue time was, what, over 105 minutes for me? And it took about an hour for me to get through the queue time in order to play Diablo 4. And that happened during Friday's stream. But after that, I think it was like Friday night, uh, Blizzard had improved the queue times. And it didn't take nearly as long for me to get into a game of Diablo 4. And I played quite a few games of Diablo 4 over the weekend with Sorcerer. And I enjoyed it. I had a blast. I put so many hours into Diablo 4. It's unreal. I did, what, uh, three, four-hour streams. That's 12 hours of me playing on stream and probably several more hours off stream. That's how much fun I was having. And the game is, is beautiful. I love the uh, setting, once again, in the Diablo world. I've been a fan of the, Di of the Diablo franchise since the original game came out on PC a long time ago. I put countless hours into Diablo 2. In fact, I've gone back into Diablo 2 Resurrected because of uh, Diablo 4 open beta over the weekend. I also was one of the beta testers for Diablo 3 on PC a long time ago. I'm sure there were plenty of beta testers out there, but I was nowhere near as impressed with the beta of Diablo 3 as I have been with uh, the open beta for Diablo 4. So I feel like Blizzard is definitely on track for releasing one of the best Diablo games since Diablo 2. During the early access of the open beta, we only had access to three of the five characters, Barbarian, Rogue, Sorcerer. I went with Sorcerer. And this coming weekend, players are gonna be able to not only play it, even if you have not pre-ordered Diablo 4, you're also gonna have access to five characters, including Druid as well as Necromancer, which are two of my favorite classes in Diablo 2 and 3. So I'm looking forward to trying out Probably the Necromancer, maybe a little bit of the Druid over the weekend whenever I have time. I may do another stream on Friday. We'll just have to wait and see. But either way, I'm definitely going to be playing more Diablo 4 over the weekend. Graphically, I was very impressed with this game so far, and it's just the open beta. The customization options for your characters is way more impressive than previous Diablo games. Diablo 3 was the first time they actually allowed you to pick between a male or a female version of the uh, different uh, classes. But they take it a step further when it comes to the uh, customization of your character in Diablo 4. So not only can you pick between male or female, you can also change their look and add jewelry and tattoos and different hairstyles and different eye colors. There's not an infinite amount of customization but I feel like the options that you get in Diablo 4 way more impressive than in previous Diablo games. By the way, the drip looks phenomenal. I love the armor, the clothing pieces, the helms, the pants, the boots. Everything looks beautiful. And this is just content from Act 1 because the open beta is basically act one of Diablo 4, more or less. And I was able to play through not only act one, so I beat act one. I also got to participate and beat uh, Ashava, the world boss. 
and I managed to get my Sorcerer up to max level 25, and some pretty cool legendary gear as well, and I was also able to get her some impressive abilities, focused mostly on lightning, a little bit of uh, fire, but mostly lightning. And I had an absolute blast playing with the Sorcerer, even though I do prefer playing Diablo games with either a Necromancer, Witch Doctor, or Druid. I just like being able to raise up my own little army to fight in my name against the hordes of demons and skeletons, zombies, and other monsters. And by the way, I played the open beta on uh, PS5, and I felt like the game, once again, handles very well on controller and that was something I was impressed with uh, Diablo 3 whenever Blizzard made it available for consoles there was a time when as someone who originally played Diablo 1 and 2 on PC I never envisioned them mapping a controller with a Diablo game to work so well as it does now obviously it works way better with a mouse and keyboard but it actually is quite comfortable and fun to play Diablo 4 just like it was with Diablo 3 and Diablo 2 Resurrected with a controller if you prefer playing on a PlayStation or Xbox over PC. Not only was I impressed with the uh, graphics so far but also uh, the uh, setting, the, the world that they're building for Diablo 4, the various uh, characters, a lot of them are uh, voice acted. I think they're going to add some different languages uh, for other people throughout the world for these characters whenever the game officially launches in June. There's a lot of different uh, customization options in the menu for uh, people that have like hearing disabilities or colorblind, etc. So props to Blizzard for trying to make this game as accommodating for as many gamers as possible. I'm very interested in the story of Lilith. Obviously, the events of Diablo 4 are set, I think, a few decades after the events of Diablo 3. And you have Lilith returning the Sanctuary along with uh, Anaris. And I'm going to try not to go into spoilers from what I saw in Act 1. But it is quite interesting to see what's going to happen between those two characters and the fact that we will most likely have the return of Diablo because it's a Diablo game after all and he has been featured in all the other Diablo games. So I wonder how Diablo and maybe even uh, his brothers, Bell and uh, Mephisto, which happens to be Lilith's father, will be brought back before the end of Diablo 4. So I'm looking forward to the story. I found the music to be amazing and creepy and it definitely had a Diablo feel and vibe to it. And speaking of sound effects, of course, a lot of that carries over from previous Diablo games, from healing to potions, to the way armor sounds, to hacking and slashing and using spells and other abilities on your enemies and the way the enemies sound, the demons, the goatmen, Overall, I thought the audio quality for the open beta of Diablo 4 was very good, just like the music, just like the graphics, and there was some lag issues that I did experience here and there, but for the most part, I had no issues playing this game, despite what happened on Friday with uh, the queue times, but I expected that, and I think a lot of Diablo 4 fans were as well. Now, I think that it might even be uh, a bigger queue time coming up on Friday because a lot more people will be able to play Diablo 4 as it becomes available for anybody to download on their PlayStation, their Xbox, or PC in order to play from March 24th through 26th. But I think that it was a good stress test over the weekend for Blizzard to see exactly what needed to be fixed and they stayed on top of it for the most part throughout the weekend and they were very good on their social media interacting with uh, the fans regarding what they were working on, what they had fixed. Overall, top notch job by Blizzard when it came to the open beta for Diablo 4, at least the early access open beta. The second open beta will be starting once again on Friday. Now when it comes to the uh, menus and learning how everything works, Admittedly, it does take a quick minute. There are things from previous Diablo games that carry over to Diablo 4, 
the waypoints and you know armors blacksmiths uh, there's also some new stuff and that's one thing i like about this game is like previous diablo games it, it takes things from previous games carries them over and tries to add some new stuff as well i also like the ability to transmog clothing because sometimes you'll get a piece of clothing where cosmetically you like the look but the abilities are the armor leaves a lot to be desired now by salvaging some of those clothing items you are able to get other different pieces of clothing helms pants etc and transmog them to make them look like the clothing for the character you prefer your character to wear but you get that ability that that particular piece of uh, clothing armor helm pants weapon etc you get the the boost you get the armor the defense the offensive capabilities but you're able to customize your cosmetics for your character which allows you to create a unique look for your character to go whichever way you want to so if there's a helm you happen to really like even if it's like an early stage helm and you play through the game say act one i don't know how many acts there's going to be but even if you find other like more impressive looking helms but you just like the look of like a, a lower level helm or armor or pants boots you get the idea you can still cosmetically keep that look but at the same time changing all the abilities and getting better improvements when it comes to the armor offensive defensive capabilities you're able to store things in uh, the stash box and if you want to buy more room in the stash box i think it's a hundred thousand gold pieces but it doesn't really take too long for you to get plenty of gold in the game there's going to be some other currencies as well one is like obols i experimented with that i think it's kind of like rng so you earn obols doing various things in the game and then you go to one of the uh, dealers of obols and it's kind of like rng it's chance you like give them like 40 obols for uh, an item and you might get a good item that's legendary or you may get a piece of crap but i was able to get at least one legendary item through uh the uh, obols i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but there's also this uh, third currency which is going to be pvp focused but I can't get into that because I don't think PvP was available in the open beta. But going back to the way things work with the menu options and stuff. Yeah, it will take you a quick minute to get a hang on it. And how to move things around when it comes to mapping it on your controller. As well as uh, editing character's title and uh, the, the skill tree. But once you get the hang of it and the way the menus work and, and how everything's set up then it, it actually works quite well. But it's a little bit different than uh, Diablo 3 as well as previous Diablos, but that's to be expected. Along with the main quest, there's side quests, there's events, there's plenty of uh, baddies that are running around uh, the Act 1 location for you to fight and kill. And they do seem to level up along with your character. And once again, you can reach the maximum level in the beta of 25. And you'll notice as you rank up, the enemies you face also rank up. It's not like Diablo 2, for example, where you can always go back to Act 1 and fight like really weak enemies that will give you like Act 1 level uh, loot and XP. The foes you face in Act 1 are balanced according to what your rank happens to be in the game. Now, in response to some criticisms out there regarding the open beta, which was not perfect, had some issues, like I mentioned, with the uh, queue times at the beginning. But from my experience playing through the early access open beta of Diablo 4, I didn't really have many problems besides some lag here and there and a little bit of stuttering. But once again, it's an open beta. That's to be expected in this situation. That's one of the reasons why Blizzard is doing the open beta. Plus, they're obviously extremely confident in this game, enough so that they're opening it up for everyone to play over uh, this coming weekend from March 24th to 26th. But there were some out there that complained about uh, server disconnects and whatnot, but it's a beta. These things, unfortunately, are going to happen when you're playing a game like this that just launched in beta. The hope is that Blizzard is able to resolve and fix these issues that pop up before it officially launches on June 2nd, which will be early access for everyone that pre-orders. And then the official launch day is June 6, 2023. Sometimes I feel like uh, fellow creators, big and small, that complain about these things tend to forget 
that this is an open beta. This is not the final version of Diablo 4. And since it's an online game, and yeah, you will encounter other players in the game, but it's basically PvE. I think they're going to do something separate for uh, people that are interested in PvP mode. But the other players you encounter, you can actually fight alongside them. I ran across several barbarians, rogues, fellow sorcerers fighting enemies and in events, especially like the world boss event that requires a lot of players to take down a Shava. You'll find yourself just randomly coming across another player, fighting beside them, killing demons and goatmen and other monsters that roam around the lands of Diablo 4. And by the way, there's also an emote system so you can say hi or thanks or an open chat so you can ask someone else a question because there were a few people asking each other questions while we were patiently waiting for taking down a Shava before the Ashava wall event started early Sunday morning. One person didn't know how to change the title on their character and somebody quickly told them just go into profile. So we're actually able to easily communicate with each other via emotes or simply chatting in uh, Diablo 4. And I definitely think this is a game you'll be able to enjoy playing solo or at least solo occasionally with randos and obviously with other players. And I think that was where some people had problems. They were having difficulties like linking up with uh, their friends. You will be able to either uh, join a clan or create your own clan and obviously play with friends. And by the way, if any of my friends end up getting Diablo 4 and want to play with me, then I look forward to forming a clan with you and roaming around Diablo 4 sometime in the future, hopefully in early June when the game officially launches. So even if that was one of the major issues when it came to uh, players trying to group up, once again, it's an open beta. These things are going to happen, and it's one of the reasons why Blizzard is putting out the open beta in the hopes of fixing these issues now before the game officially launches so that when it does come out, on June 2nd, Early Access, launch day June 6th, the majority of players will experience little to no issues jumping into Diablo 4, especially when it comes to disconnected servers, not being able to link up with fellow players and friends, and the queue times. So that's gonna be something that's gonna test people's patience, I think, on Friday, but just be patient, and hopefully you two will be able to get into the open beta of Diablo 4 starting on Friday, March 24th through March 26th. And the great news is you'll have five characters to choose from. They're adding Druid and Necromancer this weekend. Plus, you got Barbarian, Rogue, as well as Sorcerer. So that's pretty much my thoughts regarding uh, the open beta for Diablo 4. I'll play more this weekend. Maybe we'll stream on Friday. We'll just have to wait and see. But overall, I'm very, very impressed with what Blizzard has to offer in Diablo 4, and it makes me even more excited to jump in as either Necromancer or Druid this weekend and for the official launch in only a few months from now. And I'm most definitely going to continue covering Diablo 4 and streaming it coming into the summer of 2023. Your thoughts, your views, your impressions, especially for those of you that played the early access beta of Diablo 4. What were some things you really enjoyed about it? What were some issues that you happened to have? Because I would like to know if anyone else had problems. I'm very curious about that. Or for the most part, did it run smoothly for you as well? As always, welcome below in the comments section.